in this session we are going to learn about the process of respiration all the processes carried out by the body require energy in animals this energy can be obtained only from the food they eat before the energy can be used by the cells of the body it should be released from the chemicals of the food by the process called respiration in human respiration is a complex biological process it occurs in three stages they are gas exchange between the external environment and lungs gas exchange in alveoli and cellular respiration the organisms that respire aerobically must absorb oxygen into their bodies and remove carbon dioxide which is a waste product of respiration this exchange of gases with air or water around the organism is called as gas exchange the system involved in this gas exchange is the respiratory system let's learn about our respiratory system the system of passageways leads from the mouth and nostrils into the lungs the lungs are situated in the thoracic cavity or thorax the walls of the thorax are strengthened by the ribs and its floor consists of a sheet of muscle called the diaphragm we will see how the air travels through the respiratory tract air is drawn out of the nasal passage into a channel called the pharynx from there air is drawn into the trachea or windpipe the trachea is a tube running from the pharynx to the lungs it is held permanently open by c shaped rings of cartilage in its walls this stops the trachea collapsing when we breathe in the larynx or voice box is a cavity at the top of the trachea which contains the vocal cords at its lower end the trachea divides into two branches the bronchi singular is bronchus leading to each lung inside the lungs each bronchus divides again and again and form bronchioles these fine branches form a mass of little thin walled pouch like air sacs called alveoli the singular is alveolus there are about 300 million alveoli in one set of human lungs alveoli are the respiratory surface of a human let's see the special features of the respiratory tract there are numerous cilia present on the lining of the nasal cavity the epithelium which lines the inside of the trachea bronchi and bronchioles consists of ciliated cells there are also cells which secrete mucus due to the presence of mucus in the nasal cavity the lining of it is moist the mucus forms a thin film over the internal lining dust particles and bacteria become trapped in the sticky mucus film and the mucus is carried upwards away from the lungs by the movements of the cilia by the rhythmic movement of cilia the waste materials are sent out and the materials that are collected at pharynx are removed out with saliva we'll move on to the changes that take place when inhaled air passes through the nasal cavity when the air enters the nasal passage it is warmed to body temperature and humidified by moisture which evaporates from the warm nasal membranes lining the walls of these passages 
the germs and dust are removed from the nasal passage by the action of cilia and mucus the time the air reaches the lungs it is relatively dust free warm and moist the movement of air into and out of the lungs is called ventilation respiration is breathing in and expiration is breathing out let's see what happens during inspiration during inspiration air enters into the lungs for that the volume of the lung should increase and the volume of the thoracic cavity increases this is brought about by the simultaneous contraction of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles the ribs are moved by the intercostal muscles which run from one rib to the next when the intercostal muscles contract the ribs move up and the sternum moves forward at the same time the diaphragm contracts and reduces its curvature these movements increase the volume of the thoracic cavity and the volume of the lungs increase this temporarily reduces air pressure inside the lungs so the air enters into the lungs from the atmosphere through the air passages as the atmospheric pressure is higher than the pressure in the lungs during expiration the volume of the thoracic cavity should decrease to reduce the volume of the lungs the intercostal muscles relax the sternum and ribs move into their original positions the diaphragm relaxes and becomes curved so the volume of the lungs decreases the pressure inside the lungs increases temporarily so the air moves out from the lungs to the atmosphere through the nasal passage let's see how the gas exchange takes place in the alveoli the oxygen concentration in alveoli is greater than that of blood capillary network around them so oxygen passes from the alveoli into the blood capillaries by diffusion similarly carbon dioxide and water vapor concentration is greater in blood capillaries than air inside alveoli so carbon dioxide and water vapor diffuse into the exhaled air you all know that the respiratory surface of human is alveoli let's look at the characteristics of a respiratory surface surface should be moistened and permeable for gas exchange it should be thin for diffusion of gases a large surface area to exchange large volume of gas according to the needs of animals the surface must be highly vascularized the animals have different respiratory surfaces such as the gills the whole body surface or trachea but the human's respiratory surface is the wall of alveoli we will learn about the adaptations of the alveoli for efficient gas exchange the outer surface of the alveoli is covered by a dense network of capillaries the alveolar surface has one cell thickness for the efficient diffusion the alveolar surface is moist so the gases can dissolve in the moisture and pass through it a large number of alveolar sacs are in the lungs so the surface area for the diffusion is increased the third stage of the respiration process in human is cellular respiration cellular respiration is the process of oxidation of simple foods within living cells glucose combines with oxygen and produce carbon dioxide water and energy 
Look at the word equation and the balanced chemical equation for the respiration below. According to the requirement of oxygen, two types of respirations take place. Aerobic respiration which takes place in the presence of oxygen and anaerobic respiration which takes place without oxygen. Aerobic respiration releases all the available energy within each glucose molecule. But anaerobic reactions do not completely break down glucose into carbon dioxide and water, but into intermediate substances such as lactic acid or alcohol. And it releases less energy than aerobic respiration. Bacteria and yeast respire anaerobically. These organisms obtain most of their energy by a form of anaerobic respiration called fermentation. Aerobic respiration in plants is called as alcohol fermentation. During this, carbon dioxide and ethyl alcohol is produced. The anaerobic respiration that takes place within animal cells is called as lactic acid fermentation. The muscle of vertebrate animals can continue working for one or two minutes without oxygen. An athlete run a race, sometimes he gets a muscle pain and cramp because lactic acid is produced here and collected in muscles. During the energy production, part of it is lost as heat and the rest is deposited in the form of a chemical called adenosine triphosphate, shortly ATP. ATP stores some energy, otherwise it has been lost as heat. Energy is released from ATP the instant it is required. Energy can be transferred from ATP to other chemicals without energy loss.